Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. It's been a long, long time since I've done a Teen Mom recap and review, but here I am. Here I am, there am I, and I hope you all had a beautiful day today. I am so happy that I actually sat and as the show was playing last night, I wrote my notes and so Things are going to be a lot easier in the recap department over here on this channel. Now, I just want to say thank you all for watching my videos. It's been a while since I've done a recap, but recaps are my bread and butter is what I started doing on this channel. And I'm going to combine both episodes that they showed yesterday into this one recap. Some people are going to do two different um, videos. Um, your girl don't got time for that. Okay, I ain't got no time for that. Y'all already know I don't got no time for that. So let's just get started, shall we? So Macy calls Ryan to share the news about Bentley joining the high school wrestling team. Ryan then asks midway in the conversation if he can take Bentley to dinner one night during the week and Macy agrees to it. So Macy reveals to us that she and Ryan have been communicating better and getting along recently, which is a huge change from the previous struggles from years and years and years of attempted co-parenting. So ever since the reunion where they resolved their issues, both of them have been putting in effort. I'm glad to hear that, okay? Because it's been years and years and years of complete torture for me to have to review you guys not getting along. Anytime y'all are getting along is a good day for me, okay? So Macy is optimistic about the future of Bentley and Ryan's relationship. Macy is optimistic about the future of Bentley and Ryan's relationship. When she discusses Ryan's dinner plans with Taylor, Taylor is skeptical. He brings up the past instances where Ryan has let them down. And Macy emphasizes that she can't let her own personal feelings about Ryan hinder his efforts to be involved in Bentley's life right now. And Macy explains that they've committed to something and they're going to try to hold to it. And she is determined as a mom to fulfill that responsibility. So then Macy tells Taylor about the Wednesday dinner, but Taylor isn't hardly thrilled he ain't happy he's not trying to hear it okay he says he really does not understand and referred to ryan actually as a black cloud um hanging over them which taylor i don't blame you okay it comes a point where you know you have mercy upon mercy upon mercy but when when are you going to be done with your mercy okay forever okay anyway i understand wanting to give the father of your child a chance although ryan has proven time after time after time, I will, I will refrain from singing in this point of the review, but I am not making any guarantees about later. I'm just telling y'all, okay? But yeah, I completely understand Taylor's point as well. Despite Taylor's reservations, he does acknowledge that he'll be supportive of Macy and Bentley during this situation right now. And so Ryan eventually, he meets up with his parents and shares that he's excited about having dinner with Bentley, just them. And Jen, his mom, expresses that it's been a while since they've spent time together. And, you know, Larry was letting Ryan know how proud he was of him for admitting his wrongs. And um, Ryan admitted that he rarely gets to talk to Bentley. Well, we already knew that. We didn't even need you to tell us that, um, Ryan. We already knew that. Taylor is with his friend Raj, who we've never seen. I mean... I don't remember Raj being in any episodes, but you know, it's been a while. Like it's been almost a freaking year. But anyway, Taylor is not fully on board with the idea of Ryan getting another chance to bond with Bentley. Taylor believes that Ryan needs to prove himself due to his past behavior, which I 100% agree. Despite his doubts though, but that's his wife. He loves Macy so He's going to have her back regardless. He's going to have Bentley's back regardless. So then later, Macy's with her friend Keely and Keely is engaged. Oh my God. Oh my God. That ring's amazing. Keely talks about her own co-parenting challenges and then Macy shares that her and Ryan are fulfilling their parenting commitments, but she finds the situation a bit weird and so do I. But there's a lot of weird things that happen in this episode and the other one, so yeah. So Macy says that Taylor feels helpless in this situation, but she points out that Ryan is Bentley's father and she's just not, you know, frankly, she's just not worried about Taylor's feelings right now. It's not about Taylor, okay? It's not about Taylor, it's about Bentley right now. Bentley and Ryan the next day have their one-on-one -on -one dinner. Taylor ended up driving Bentley to the meeting. And Macy was anxious because she said it had been a long time since Ryan and Bentley were together solo. The dinner did go well. Bentley said that it went well. 
And, you know, Macy and Bentley just have this heartfelt moment where, you know, they're discussing the situation. And Bentley's like, you know, I want to be aware when you guys are arguing. And Macy's like, well, you know, I mean, I'm not going to tell you every little thing that we argue about. But, you know, if there's something you're con concerned about, you definitely can ask, you know, and get some, you know, get some answers or whatever. And, you know, Macy reminds Bentley that they're all human and you know, they need to figure things out and work through any challenges that come their way. Macy assures Bentley, you know, she won't keep him in the dark. She'll let him know what's going on. She lets us know and everybody know that, you know, she wants to be supportive of Bentley in case Ryan lets Bentley down, which I hate to say it, but I know he will. I'm really sorry, but he just has a track record that trails him, that follows him. He's a zebra. And what can zebras not do? Zebras cannot change their stripes. I am really, really sorry to tell you. You know how long I've been reviewing this damn show? Do you know how long Ryan has been on drugs? Okay, it's been a long freaking time. So I, I don't want to give up hope on a human being because, you know, there are addicts that eventually do grasp it and do get a hold of it. But the chances when you've been on drugs for so long are very slim. I am really sorry to tell you. Now we're here with Brianna and just um, telling y'all because I had two episodes, I don't have time to be putting all these different pictures up. Okay, I love y'all though. Okay, I ain't got time to be going through 100,000 pictures tonight. It's already late. And I said I was going to post this video for y'all. So just deal with me. Okay, so we're here with Brianna. And in this scene, Brianna discusses her changed relationship with Devoin, which is freaking crazy and yes for those of you who are new to my channel hi my name is tracy and i am a teen mom fanatic even though i hate it i love it but anyway devoin's correct pronunciation of his name is devoin it's not devon brianna or is it brianna i believe brianna is the correct pronunciation of her name but for some reason i just don't feel like saying brianna i'm really sorry <laughs> But I'd, I'd be saying Devoin though, because that's just what I'm accustomed to saying. But yeah, y'all can call him Devoin if y'all want. I don't care. The situation between her and uh, Devoin changed. Rihanna reveals that after hitting rock bottom due to a gambling addiction, Devoin decided to seek help and he completed a 30-day rehab program. So since coming home, she says that he has transformed into a black butterfly. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> you knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. But anyway... <laughs> Anyway, he has transformed into <laughs> he has transformed into a different person and the two of them have been spending time together as a family. So Brianna talks to Roxanne, who is her mom, and uh, she talks to Roxanne about Devoin's progress and how he has a game plan, programs and people in order to support him in getting help for his continued recovery and his addiction. So Roxanne acknowledges Brianna's compassion for Devoin. So Brianna says to Roxanne, you know, she's taking Devoin with her to Indiana for Jade's wedding planning. She believes that it'll be beneficial for him to spend time with another former addict who is Sean. And, you know, basically they'll have a lot in common because they went through the same thing. So after returning from Indiana, um, Brianna mentions that Devoin asked if he could sleep with her. And by the way, while she was in Indiana, obviously she told Jade that while she was in the car, like he's trying to get with her. She didn't want to basically take steps backwards, trying to have a sexual whatever with him. You know, she's trying to just be friends right now, focus on the kids, you know, she, and, and she says she's not ready for a relationship is what Brianna said. Brianna declined his inclination, talking about, can he share the bed with her? Now, you know what a man wants when he wants to share the bed. He's not trying to cut him. Okay. Let's be real here. Jade suggests to Brianna that maybe Devoin has always had these feelings for her. He just didn't say anything, okay? But like I said, Brianna is very cautious about rushing into a relationship and she believes that she needs time to work on herself. And I gotta respect you for that, Brianna, because you know what? Girl, you're not wrong. Brianna eventually goes on a date with Devoin because he asked her out. And that's another, like, I was shocked by this whole episode, okay? I did not see this happening at all. I'm sure a lot of you did not see this happening they discuss their issues or whatever and devoin expresses that he never hated her she admits that she never gave the idea of some type of romantic relationship with him a thought because of all their problems hello they were always fighting despite their past devoin wants to try to you know make it work and have a little happy family and um, Brianna suggests that they go to family counseling. She says that if he goes to family counseling, she knows that he's serious. Brianna says that, you know, basically she does, she believes that everybody deserves a second chance, although Devoin is like on his 100th chance. She believes that everyone deserves a second chance and wants to give it a shot for the sake of the children. And um, children, you know, obviously Devoin only has one child with Brianna 
but he has a close relationship with her other daughter, Stella, who has another father. Okay, I'm trying to, um, forgive me if you are accustomed to this show, but I'm trying to catch up the people who are not accustomed to our little program here. Okay, so forgive me. And this pop filter is not, pop, it's not doing its job. So please forgive me for the pops, okay? <laughs> I'm going to refrain from seeing LaVert, although I want to. Yeah, so Brianna says that, you know, basically the kids deserve to see them happy together. So we'll see where that goes. I really don't know where it's going to go. But um, I don't know, guys. Um, I'm kind of deep down in my little heart of hearts. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that they eventually you know, make a good relationship and walk down the aisle and get engaged and all that stuff. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's the romantic in me. I'm crazy. So we're up to Cheyenne and I already do not like her segments. And I'll tell you why. Because I realized that she only wants to show you the sweet, soft, bubblegum, peppermint candy part of her life. She does not want you to see her struggles, okay? Cheyenne says that her life has been chaotic, okay? So after their wedding, they moved into their new dream home. However, things took a turn when Zach faced the consequences for an old DUI charge. Are you sure that's old? Zach, I can never remember this man's name, I swear. What's up with that scar above his mustache? I do not remember seeing that before, I'm pretty sure. But then again, maybe I just wasn't paying attention because they showed a flashback and it was there too. And I'm like, maybe he painted it in for the wedding girl, I don't know, but it's distracting. Despite the challenges, they managed to overcome it. And first of all, Zach only went to jail for 24 mother freaking hours. How'd you manage that? And I'm going to tell you something, they glaze right on over that little, oh, I went to jail thing, just like a little donut, just like a glaze, dog, they glaze right over that. We turn this focus to Corey and Cheyenne, who discuss Corey's daughter, Maya, and Maya needs open heart surgery, amongst other procedures. Corey and Taylor, Taylor is Maya's mother, who, by the way, MTV said was not coming back on the show because she said some very racist things back in the day. And because NTV is running out of drama, they put her back on here. And I do not understand why, because honey, I do not need to see you on the show. Is it fair to have your kid on the show and not you? Hmm. MTV needed some drama, so they just was like, come on girl, we're gonna forget all about your past. Corey and Taylor have a conversation about Maya's struggle with breathing and um, Corey assures Taylor that the baby's going to be okay. Cheyenne expresses concern for Corey's well-being and suggests checking in with Corey and Taylor. At this point, she's talking to Zach, saying that basically she wants to check in with Corey to see how he's doing because she can tell he's not doing great and she doesn't know what's gonna happen once this comes to a head. And you know, she's like, he's gonna explode, but girl, that's not your business. You got a man. It's not your business to be concerned about whether Corey's going to explode. That's Taylor's job. A setback occurs when baby Maya comes down with a cold, AKA they called it the rhinovirus. I've never heard of that. Ryder, who is Cheyenne's daughter, says the baby came down with a rhino cold. Girl, you so cute. <laughs> yeah, so because the baby came down with a rhinovirus, her surgery was postponed for two to three weeks and Corey understandably was very irritated he just wants this to be over and he confides in his mom about his worries regarding the baby's appearance like how she's gonna look with all the tubes with all the scars and all that stuff after surgery Corey and Taylor and Ryder all fly back home because you know at this point don't make no sense to stay there so they fly back home. Cheyenne and Zach have a conversation about Corey's feelings. And Cheyenne mentioned this is the lowest that she's ever seen Corey. Okay, so we're here with Caitlin and Tyler. And this is going to be the easiest thing I have to say. They're getting rid of the Octagon house. They looked for a new house. They put in an offer. They got the house. And now they're moving. And end of scene. Next person. So we're here with Jade. And the focus is Jade's wedding planning. And if anybody knows me, y'all know. Specifically, I cannot stand two things on these reality shows. Specifically, Teen Mom. Birthday party planning and wedding planning. Girl, I do not freaking care. I ain't getting married. So I do not care. Brianna is going to fly to accompany Jade, as I mentioned before. She's bringing Devoin. And she's coming with Jade to go wedding dress shopping. And so they all, which is Sean, Devoin, Brianna, 
and Jade are discussing Jade's relationship with her mom, Christy. They're, everybody's here. Her friends are here, whatever. I guess it's her, all of her bridesmaids. They're at a bridal dinner with Jade discussing the relationship with her mom. Jade reveals that her parents are not financially contributing to the wedding, so they're not heavily involved in the planning or pretty much anything else. So Jade considers asking her mom to go into treatment as she believes her, their relationship won't be healthy if her mom's mentality remains toxic. And she says her mom is not in a good place with herself and hasn't been for a long time, by the way, guys. I know everything. But anyway, when Jade's bridesmaids arrive for the dress shopping, Christy expresses concern about the cost of the dress. Girl, she got MTV money. What are you worried about? Leading to tension in the car. Okay, so tension in the car. Christy's trying to literally pull off the microphone. Brianna, Jade, and Christy are in the car and christy gets mad she's trying to take off the microphone brianna's like lady we are not dropping you on the street uh and you're not taking an uber so you need to just relax yourself okay despite this conflict jade still wants her mom to be involved in the wedding preparations so she invites her to the cake tasting now she's driving next scene some other scene she's driving on the way to the cake tasting which is christy's driving and jade is in the passenger seat and all of a sudden, Jade has a panic attack and asks Christy if she can pull the car over. And then we come back. Eventually, they do get to the cake tasting. And they're a little late, but they reach. And, you know, Christy with this nasty cough she's had for the past eight years, coughing all over the cakes. And Jade is like, Mom, you know what I'm saying? You're coughing all over the cakes. And so I feel like... This is what I feel like happened. I feel like Christy had to cough again, but because Jay was complaining about her coughing, she got up and she went outside, I guess, to cough. I don't know if that's the reason, but it just makes sense to me. But the thing is, did you have to stay out all that time? She left the cake tasting. Christy left the cake tasting and did not come back. And it left Jade heartbroken and made her feel like, well, damn, what did I invite you here for? Jade says that all her life, she's been doing things to try to get acceptance and love from her mom. And she just realized that her efforts are in vain. She's just never going to receive it. And it's the saddest thing ever. And I hate that. She's had such a rough childhood, all because of her irresponsible freaking parents. In this teen mom scene, we're here with Ashley and Barr. They're facing challenges after moving to Nevada for her nursing school. So Barr had a warrant for a gun. Um, he did a little gun situation at the birthday. Uh, was it the graduation party? I remember, I think. And he was arrested for that. He was like throwing your guns in the air and blah, blah, blah. Like you just don't care. He was doing some stupid stuff like that. And he ended up being arrested and spending a month in jail. So now Barr needs to complete 100 hours of community service in three months or he could face six years in jail. So in this episode here, which was, um, I believe was episode 19, Barr starts his community service at the Salvation Army. So Barr starts his community service at the Salvation Army and he talks to a gentleman overseeing the program about his past impulsive decisions. And now that gentleman is actually overseeing the program, which is beautiful. Ashley is on a video chat with her sister, Chris. She's over here on a video chat with her sister, Chris. And she's worried that Barr might not follow through with his community service and end up back in jail. Girl, six years is prison, not jail. There's a difference. And I didn't know there was a difference until I got older, but there's a difference between jail and prison. Ashley admits to having no backup plan if he fails to complete the community service. And Barr hasn't even been keeping track of his hours. He's, what is wrong with this guy? Like he wants to be, he wants to be Bubba's girlfriend. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. He wants to be worried about dropping soap. Okay, because I don't understand what is Barr's problem. Does does he have a mental mother freaking problem? If you told me I have to do 100 hours of community service or go and serve six years in prison, I'm doing that 100 hours in one week. I'm not playing with you. I'm not playing with you. I'm going to do, I'm literally going to do, I know you can't do that in one week, but I'm just saying, well, in one week you could do it, right? Let me think. Nah, that's a lot. But you could, you could knock it out in three weeks. If you do, I mean, if you do enough time, you could, you could even probably do a hundred hours in a month because you are not working. It's not like you work in a regular job, fool. He don't work a regular job. So that 40 hours a week that he would be doing he could have literally, we all do 40. Think about it. We do 40 hours a week, guys. We do 40 hours a week. In one month, we've done 160 hours. So this fool, and he is a freaking fool, could have done that 100 hours of community service within a matter of three weeks or four weeks, okay? He's being lazy and he has a mental problem. And I am not understanding for the life of me why Ashley's wasting her mother freaking time on this bum. Because that's what he is, a freaking 
bum i swear i said this before so ashley is frustrated and concerned about their future girl you need to be concerned about you and holly's future and leave this dude he's dumb he's dumb and he's just what is he contributing to you really besides an eye tattoo girl anyway so i just don't understand she got so much going for herself and she's staying with this dumb dumb but anyway chris asks ashley like if he did go to prison for six years would you stay in nevada or would you come back to cali and ashley's like girl i'm not coming back to cali um in the end ashley acknowledges that she knows how this is gonna play out and she expresses frustration with bar's behavior yeah but you're expressing you're expressing your frustration but your frustration needs to be actions you need to move the hell out of there get the hell away from this dude and just co-parent with him I promise you, even if y'all wasn't living together, he would not be able to pay any type of child support. And Leah, what are you doing to your face? Your face looks different. Leah's face looks really different. She got some stuff going on. She never used to have dimples. What's going on with this? Her face looks so different now. I do like Leah though, but whatever. Leah is planning yet another birthday party. I hate birthday parties. I hate birthday party planning, y'all. So she's planning another birthday party for the twins. She considers inviting Jalen. Why? Why Why do I have to see Jalen in the show still? He's your ex. Leave him an ex. Leah says she recently broke off the engagement and agreed not to disclose the details because of a legal situation. And despite the breakup, Leah hopes that they can remain friends. Although, why? Why though? I don't understand why you're trying to be friends with this fool. You're confusing the girls. I hope you know that. We do some flashbacks of the proposal, whatever, where Jalen presented Leah with a deed bearing their names. But then later on, Leah found out that was all lies. Lies. Using lies as alibis. Lies. A bunch of lies her name really wasn't on the lead they, um, on, sorry <laughs> her name really lead her name really wasn't on the deed that there was no money put behind that deed so yeah it wasn't official and had no money attached to it and Leah who was involved with the proposal admits she thought it was real but it was an ultimately a facade all right. So Leah expresses that she was empathetic towards Jalen and genuinely in love with him. But after discovering the truth of his deed lie, she became angry. And as a result, she's disinvited him to the upcoming party. First of all, it was just weird that you would invite him anyway. Alrighty, guys, that is the end of my review. I hope you really enjoyed it. I put two episodes in one. I don't think I've ever done that on this uh, channel. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed my recaps and I will be reviewing this show. I expect to see the recap one to two days after the showing of the episode because sometimes I just need more time. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.